Hey everybody, I hope your day is going great so far. What we're going to do is take a look at uh, some white rose resources. They are an, in abundance in school and we use them sort of daily. Um, they are very handy um, and a lot of people are asking, you know, how can I use these properly and how can I write on them? Um, I don't necessarily want to have to write on the web, I don't want to write on slides. Um, and people are asking you know, how can i use the boards you know a little bit better and more intuitively with my class so if you just look behind me i've got a powerpoint which i've opened up in the web this is from my google drive so from my google drive i've got uh, white rose resources in my google drive that are powerpoint um they are powerpoint and I'm going to open them up in Google Drive on the web in Chrome or Edge. Now what's happening is there are sometimes some errors and these errors will tell you one of two things really. The first thing is if you make any changes then they are not going to be uh, the formatting won't stay the same or something will occur where your changes won't have saved and it, by the time that you come back next time anything that you've done inside it uh, will have disappeared. Second is that if you're collaborating with someone else and someone else has opened up the same document, that the changes that they make are probably going to overwrite what you've made uh, rather than there being a, a normal history of who changes what, that you can actually go back and just change those histories and change those edits. And it's not actually letting you. There's a, there's a, there's a, a whole kind of box that appears on the middle of the screen that says, you know, be aware, make a make changes now and save them um, before you, you collaborate, essentially, essentially. What people wanted to do was go and write on these and go and use them uh, natively and what you can do is if you're going to open them up open up PowerPoint locally like I have here behind me you then can then write on them and keep those annotations sort of locally and when you close your app and close PowerPoint that all the annotation will stay there and then when you go back and open them back up again just like I've got in these two uh, circles that are just on my whiteboard right here so those circles I close the app open them up again and it's still there now this is handy for many reasons is that you know you'll have a single resource that spans an entire week or spans a couple of days and so you want to come back and just rejig and revise what's been learned now if i use my pen here and i go to my draw function the difference here is that the the writing tools and the drawing tools that are in powerpoint far supersede those that you can get on the web the ones on the web, there seems to be one set um, that is a copycat for all the others. And the problem is that when you start to go and draw in these, and then you start to change the sizes on the web, is that you, when you start drawing on the pages, one, the lines are very rarely smooth lines that you actually get. Second is that when you start to erase them, you have to erase them as a pixelated format. And so when you try to erase them like this and you go and take sort of a pixels away from them one by one, you tend to end up having lots and lots of fragmented lines that appear on your screen. And this is both annoying and time consuming, especially when you've got the children in front of you. The other thing is that if you notice at the bottom here, I've got uh, Annie has made an error. It's just behind my face. So I'm going to just take this out for a second. It says Annie has made an error and by multiplying the whole number by the dominant denominator. So inside here, and I draw this, you can see where Annie is starting to sort of do um, these multiplications when she's multiplying these two uh, and, she's, and she's ended up with that six. Uh, you can see that the text at the bottom here that I've got, this text is actually handwritten. So if I just go and get my cursor, this is actually handwritten. And so I use this tool here with the A, and when I, if I go and write the, uh, Annie's name, it can go and create the text here at the bottom, and it will handwrite it for us. Now the good thing about this is that we can go and highlight all this, 
and then we can go and simply use this uh, this text to translate so it means that if you have e uh, EAL st uh, staff with with you or your TA is uh, on an iPad or something like that that they are um, then going able to go and then work with uh, your students um, who are quite possibly able to go and uh, read another language that you can go and use sort of you know ad hoc there and then so if I go and highlight that for example I'm just going to highlight that text and then uh, if I right click on there you'll notice just next to my face I've got my translate tool and then just above my head I can go in and change uh, my language to pretty much anything that I like and this happens in, in every single application. The last thing I just wanted to point out was also the highlighting with uh, web-based annotation is that when we highlight uh, across text you have to sort of uh, create the, the, the transparency on the page itself it doesn't give you the transparency that is natural so if I just go to the thickest here and then I try and highlight this we can still read the text with highlighters on the web you have to sort of set the transparency whether it be 30 percent 40 percent you know because normally it's set as sort of 60 percent so that it's actually you know usable there and then and um, the good thing about this lastly is that is that the annotations uh, remain on the page so uh, if I just go and close this for a second and, and then I go and just open up PowerPoint one more time um, I can then go and open up the PowerPoint that I've just used and my pa my all my annotations have stayed there which means that if you are creating a new slide for example then you're able to go and keep this you know, as it was and you know duplicate the slide if you wanted to go and duplicate the slide and then go and take away the uh, annotations and keep the page you know as it was and as you needed it you know so then you're able to then keep those for the next time that you teach this and just rejig your your memory or, or you know or revise what it is that you're learning and teaching in the classroom the same thing applies to word so you can see that i had word open there and then so then you can go and use these draw tools in exactly the same way including sort of things like you know ink replay behind you that if you are able to go and send this and use this with the other adults in your classroom whatever it is that you're talking about in that class you can then go and replay that to the students and then that is an easy way to rejig their their memory as they're using uh, the tools from the board to the table right i hope that helps uh, get in touch if you want more training or you want one-to-one -one or you want group or teamwork um, i'm here to help you out